Okay, I think we're rolling. Okay. Let's see. Oh, let me get into position here. So, hello. Um, it is June 27th, and here's your reading. I'm keeping it anonymous for you. And um, I took some notes about your question, so let me just like read through what I wrote to make sure we're on the same wavelength. Uh, you said, you don't know what's going on with yourself. You'd like to get out of the funky spot you're in. You're having trouble connecting with your spirit guides. You're feeling blocked in the course you're taking on angel attunement. Um, although you meditate daily, it's not helping you connect with your spirit guides or angels. Um, however, your intuition is growing. So there's a little bit of a positive note there. Um, so I'm just taking another note while I'm thinking about it. Um, and um, great. So I took that nine digit number and I'm using it in two ways. Um, I, I've turned it into a couple other numbers to use to as a, me a method of choosing cards numerog numerologically for you. So this is kind of fun. I have this deck that I've actually never used before, but since you mentioned angels, um, I thought it would be fun to pull this out. So um, it's called Angelarium. Oracle of Emanations. I've, since I've never used it before, I'm just gonna have to read out of the book what this actually means. I'm just gonna read it out loud for you. But I thought it might set the tone since it's a deck about angels. And um, I really bought this deck just because I love the artwork that I saw online. So this is Bina. It says on the card, left eye and knowledge. Um, it says the third emanation a flow of light that pours into the world, a candle whose flame may light another without diminishing its own. Bina seeks not only creation, but purpose. She is a flare of pure intent that blossoms from the heart of existence and out into the world. Her energy brings with it a desire for knowledge. She is the force that turns all the potential from higher emanations into a form that can be received by our consciousness. Well, isn't that fortuitous? That's me talking. Um, so back to the book, um, it says, the white orb illuminates the way forward. Ah, in the picture here, okay. Bina sits atop the pillar of severity, heading the feminine aspect of the diagram, creating a perfect balance with Chokma at her side. Together they represent a continuum of psychic understanding. While Bina represents the power of knowing, Chokma reveals the power of not knowing. One acts as a vessel as the other fills that vessel, giving it purpose. And then it says, found in learning, shared experience, and creation. Hmm. Well, that's really interesting. I just thought that would set the mood. Do with, do with that information what you, what you will. And I'll just place this aside for now. Um, there's a... Uh, a leg of the tripod is right here, so I'm trying going to try hard not to knock it. Um, I also used the number you gave me to draw, draw a, a general guide for this reading for you, like kind of like guide meaning advice. And I'm going to put this aside, and I, I'd like to, I like to look at that one at the end. Um, the deck you chose, by the way, in the starry bag was the Universal Weight Tarot, and so that's what we're going to be using today. I shuffled these. Um, before I turned on the camera so we wouldn't have to do that. <clears throat> I'm gonna pick three and just kind of lay a foundation for the situation. Here we go, one, hmm. two, that one, three. Let's take a look. Okay, I do read reversals. Um, usually to me, a reversal is not the opposite meaning. Once in a while it is, but for me, usually I use reversals as either meaning that the energy is, well, that the energy is blocked in some way and the blockage can me mean um, delay, um, something slow to manifest, or um, Sometimes I think it's if it's if it's like an action or something you have to do, then I would say that, I, that my usual phrase is that it'll be a tough slog. So here we have 
the Three of Pentacles. The Three of Pentacles. Um, pentacles are the suit of Earth, um, pragmatics. So I'm going to turn this card around just so I can see it. So basically we have something being built. We have, we have an appreciation, and there's an appreciation of skill here. So I would say that um, in light of what you're asking about, you have a practice you've been building with your spirit guides, with your, with angel communication. Um, and I'd say that you, you've started to lay a foundation in place there, but something is blocked. So um, that's kind of where we are. Continuing down the line, I kind of look at it sort of as a sentence here. Now, in the center here, we have the King of Swords. So swords are the suit of, of the mind. They're the suit of intellect. They're also the suit of communication because, you know, the mind is what allows humans to communicate as we do. So the King is all about it's about mastery, attainment, um, and uh, authority, really. So um, you'll notice here on on the on the back of his throne there are butterflies too. Butterflies are common in the swords in the swords amongst the court um, as a symbol of transformation. So using your intellect, using thought, using language to have a transformative effect on whatever you're seeking. So here, I think right now what you're doing, and because you're taking a class, that's an intellectual pursuit, right? Especially. So you are trying to gain a mastery over, over spirit guide communication, angelic communication here. So again, lays a good foundation for the, for the, um, for the spirit of the reading here. Now I have the Empress reversed. Um, the Empress is often seen as pregnant. It's usually a mother figure um mother not like in a actual human being sort of way but in um in like the mother goddess sort of way um the one of the special symbols to me in this card is that there's all of this wheat in the foreground and the wheat to me is always a reminder of this um it's actually a business expression um <laughs> from a book from the 60s about project project work um the phrase that this always makes me think of is um, you could like a, 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 a woman makes a baby in nine months since the empress is thought of as usually being pregnant. But on a project, you can't hire nine women to make a baby in one month. Um, so this isn't exactly about uh, like, you know, I guess like if I had to sum it up in one word, it's a little bit about patience, but it's Patience on a grander scale, since this is a major arcana card, right? So she's the empress. She is basically creating life right now, if you think of her as pregnant. But in, in, when you think about it in um, sort of, uh, in the terms of the cycles of nature, when you, when you plant seeds, they take time to grow. So it's, this is about also making sure that you have enough time for the seeds that you're planting to germinate and actually mature before you can then reap the benefit of that. And since it came reversed, I think in this general situation, it is going to be a tough slog. Either that or it's going to take a long time. Um, well, usually things that are a tough slog do take a long time. That's what the reversal is telling me here. So. The good news is that you have planted the seeds, you're doing this course, you've made a good foundation over here, but it seems like it's gonna be a lot of work to, to work through it, to actually get to where you need to go. So let me see. Um, before I get to the spirit guides, why don't we, one of the tools you're using is meditation. So why don't we take a look at the efficaciousness of the meditation that you're doing right now? So um, let me see, how do I wanna phrase this? Why don't we just look at the energy of, the, of your meditation as a tool then and how it is basically helping you right now or, or not. Um, so I'm gonna draw this for the meditation. I'm also gonna draw a guide for the meditation. The guide will tell us, you know, how can we, where, where, where do we want to go with it? Sort of like an action to take. So looking at the meditation, let's see. Interesting. Okay. Well, this came up reversed. I'm going to turn it around just while I look at it. So, or for you to look at it too. So um, 
this is the seven of wands, the wands for the suit of will. So this is like the fire inside you. Um, pentacles, like if it has to do with a job or something, usually that's like your job to like bring home the bacon. If wands are about a job, that's more like your vocation, your calling, the, 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 the thing that you do that doesn't seem like it's work because you love it so much. So um, in terms of this, I, one of the meanings I always have to the Seven of Wands, and oh, I didn't do the thing I usually do. Um, I usually have another deck available. Let me actually grab it. Because um, I like to contrast the cards for people. Uh, let's see. I think this deck over here is in order um, because I want to explain why I have this special meaning for this card. Um, let me show you the Five of Wands. And Five of Wands is right here. Because the Five of Wands is so similar. And I think this should be in view. So the Five of Wands in this deck, you can see that there's a whole bunch of people. Five is like, numerically, it's struggle. So there's a struggle of wills here. But you'll notice that they're all on the same level. They're all kind of young. And um, they're not really hurting each other. But there's a struggle here. And um, there's no clear winner. So to me, I like this card for you because what this is saying to me is it's very similar. You've got all these like you've got six wands coming up from below, but you have a man who's on the high ground. Right. So that means to me, when you contrast it with the five, you have fought this battle before. So to me, if you're using meditation to, 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 to get through your spirit guides, this is like a technique that you've you're, you're, you must be mature in. Maybe, maybe not mature as in years and years and years, but you've been using it for a while and I think that you have solved problems with it before. And so what this is telling you is that, okay, you know, there, you might be in a struggle now, just like here, but you've been through the struggle before, you've overcome things in the past, and now you're on higher ground. There's another aspect to this card. I don't think it really applies. <laughs> Well, let me, uh, uh, well, we can't interact, right? But um, in this card, in the Seven of Wands, he's wearing two different shoes. And that means he had to scramble to get where he is, to get into the position he's in. So something unexpected usually comes up as a part of this card. So I don't know, in conjunction with your using meditation as a tool, if you maybe just kind of pulled it out of your tool bag and said like, oh, what? nothing's working, I'm just going to meditate without having like maybe the long term act aspect of the practice. That could be one sort of like aspect of this, the, the fact that he got to where he is by scrambling. Um, the other thing I might say is that um, he's still a little ill prepared. So I don't know, you, you know yourself. And so if that rings true, if that added aspect to you rings true, um, you know, just do with, do with that what you will. Now, it's, it did come up reverse. So to me, when the cards come up reverse, that does mean it's a, it's a tough slog. Um, and the other aspect of reversal is could be that it could be the delay aspect might mean that it, it might take quite a while of practice in order for you to really make progress with the meditation. Um, I don't know if you're how do I say this? From the guides, the three of wands, it's another one. It's also about will and, and uh, that fire within you, the suit of fire. Um, what I'm getting from this card is that, and I'm going to do that thing where I compare again. <laughs> so let me grab the two of wands out of this other deck. So that's what the two of wands look like. So you've got a guy who's like, he's got a, a globe in his hand and he's about to, he's like contemplating and he's trying to set something into motion based on his will. Um, but you'll note that there's a wand here and there's a second wand here that's like still attached to the castle or the crenellation or whatever this is. And so he's not quite ready to set all of this into motion. He's still, he's still hindered. His will is still hindered, right? And part of, because half of it, 50% of the wands in the picture are still attached. Now, the next one in the story here, the three, things have been set into motion. There, um, I don't know if it shows well on the camera, but um, he's standing on a, uh, like a precipice, I guess, a cliff, and he's like looking out over a yellow ocean. And there's three tiny ships. 
So basically what he was contemplating in the two is now set into motion in the three. So I think the indicator as a guide for you is that there's some sort of passion in you. I don't know if it's about using, about how you're using meditation, a method of it, or where you're trying to go with that as a part of your practice. But I think um, this is telling you definitely to persevere because you can get things to be set into motion somehow with the meditation. So it looks like the meditation for you is a good practice. It's not gonna be easy. Um, although I, I don't know any human being who has ever said that um, meditation is easy, but it looks like you will set into motion what you're trying to achieve, what you were contemplating in the two of wands over here, what, you were con what you're contemplating and using the meditation for it will get set into motion because the three, that's that's the culmination of like the mini journey of the one, two, three. If you look at, if you look in tarot as like, you know, as you go through the numbers, you can have one through three as a mini journey, four through six, seven through nine. I think, I think it's, I think it's good to, for you to stick with. I think that's what the cards are saying here. Now, that's the meditation aspect. And I don't know if I need to treat you mentioned both the spirit guides and your angel class. Um, I don't know how you work with angels or if, if like, for instance, if some people feel that their spirit guides are angels. So I don't know if those are two sides of the same coin for you or if they're very distinct things. But since you're feeling so blocked with your spirit guides, um, let's just take a look. At, let's take a look at spirit guides. So. I'm gonna draw a card just for the energy around your spirit guides right now. And I think I'm going to draw a card for your action to take. So again, this is like the, the guide or the advice, where should you be going with your, with, with your spirit guide practice right now? Um, I'm just gonna do that, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna start with these and then we can always pull more if it, we don't get a resounding message one way or the other. So let's see, we've got the King of Pentacles in reverse. We have the Fool, interesting. Okay, those are quite a contrast. Um, so the King of Pentacles, I'm gonna turn him up, turn him right side up. There we go. So you've got two kings here. That's already interesting. So it sounds like, you know, when there's resonance like this, that's, that's significant. So it looks like you are in a phase right now of of mastery, right? Of, um, I think authority is less apt here, a, a definition, but um, you're trying to gain some mastery right now. Since the King of Pentacles came up reversed, um, the, I mean, that represents the blockage with, with, with the communication, doesn't it? Interestingly, I mean, the communications down here in the, is in the situation, but specifically with working with your spirit guides, the, the aspect of mastery here with the Pentacles it's earthy, so that's one aspect of the earthiness is being grounded. Um, another aspect of earthiness is, 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 is um, what's the word? Pragmatism sounds so technical, like day-to-day -day stuff, like um, Maslow's needs, like um, uh, what you need to do to take care of yourself, take care of your family, uh, things like food, job as a job as a livelihood as a as a way to maintain um your um you know your your home and and and, and taking care of yourself all of those sorts of things so i would say that um because that's blocked um i don't know how your practice with your spirit guides is like um some people I think might communicate with their spirit guides throughout the day, like while they're sitting at work. And some people, you know, this might like while they're eating food or doing, going throughout their day. And then some people look at it as more of a sacred practice. And um, like they only communicate to their spirit guide if they're in their special spot where they meditate or if they're in front of their, one of, uh, in front of their altar um, or one of their altars or making it very special and setting aside time to it, time to do it. So I'm, I might say, because it's the King of Pentacles, that if you are 
one of the if you're the type who is doing your spirit guide work in front of an altar or at specific times of the day like it's your daily practice that you do when you first wake up or when you um when you go to bed at night this might be telling you that well you know your spirit guides are there for you 24 7 so maybe you can mix it up a little bit and bring try to master communicating with them throughout the, the just the normal course of the day when you're doing normal things right mastery over mastery over earth is about pragmatics and daily life right so if you can incorporate them there maybe that's the blockage that um it could be that you're being too ceremonial i don't know because i don't we can't we can't interact but um that's where my intuition is going with that card. Now, the guide, however, is the Fool. The Fool is um, a major arcana card like the Empress down here. Um, it's numbered zero. Um, I have a special metaphor I use for that. I use like, I think of it as an egg. Um, an egg because the Fool is really the start. It's the first card in the, in the major arcana from zero to 21. And to me, it's kind of like being in the womb. It's kind of like being um, in a place where all possibilities could happen. It's because you're on the precipice of birth, of being born. Um, so he's just kind of happy-go-lucky in the womb. And he's got, he technically has a wand here. Um, it's more like the stick that's carrying his little, little bag with the eagle on it. And um, to me, to some people, that represents kind of a karmic element here that you know he's about to be born and all of his past life experience is coming with him into this new existence so as a guide what I'm what I would get with the fool is that you know if you can bring your spirit guide work into your daily existence then you kind of have infinite possibilities as to where you can go with it um, and that makes a little sense, right? If you are the type of, uh, you know, maybe we have to follow up on this one, but if you are the type of person who, who reserves time and, and, um, and, and spirit guide communication is special, what this could be telling you here is that by bringing spirit guide communication into, into your life while you're sitting on the bus, while you are, you know, taking your coffee break, while you are driving or, um, or doing whatever you do, um, the possibilities could be endless. So that's kind of what I'm getting here in terms of this, of the spirit guide advice. Um, I'm going to look at the energy of this class you're taking to. Um, okay, this one. Interesting. So that's the eight of wands and that card's really just kind of simple. It usually means that something is going to happen swiftly. So I think with this course, despite the fact that you have been having problems, you will make swift progress. Um, how can you ensure that the progress is going to be swift? The Wheel of Fortune in reverse. Okay, so to me, what this is saying is that um, in order to ensure that you make good progress, you're going to have to take the ups and downs of the situation. There are always ups and downs in life. Um, and I think those are where the roadblocks are going to be because it was the Wheel of Fortune reversed. That's usually like you will have the stumbling blocks um, as the wheel turns. The wheel, you know, the wheel can either can either bring you up or it can knock you down. So I think the lesson here is if you want to be making the progress, be prepared for setbacks, setbacks, things that are going to be knocking you down. Um, know that they're coming. And um, if you weather those, you'll be able to make that swift progress here. Um, so that's kind of like a, a beware sort of advice card. Um, Based on your, well, let me just, I'm just gonna look at my computer again to see if there's anything else you said. Um, your intuition is growing. Yeah, I think that's it for, for what you, the way I would normally explore it. Now let's look at that card that I had reserved before, which is the general guide for your reading. So you got a Knight of Pentacles. That's kind of interesting. Okay, and it's reversed. 
So the Knight of the Pentacles, and the, the, this is the most subdued of the four knights in the um, in the deck. You'll notice that this horse is actually just standing; it's not in motion. Um, but again, it is it is the um, it's pentacles. It's that sort of earth energy and pragmatism and stability and things like that, and it's reversed. So knights go on quests, and so the theme of this card is really about. Um, not exactly, but it's sort of an adolescent energy, a gung-ho energy of, um, about going on a quest to seek the nature of the element. So um, I think that's blocked for you right now, though. So I think like in, in wherever you are right now, and maybe one of the reasons why you have blockage is that you don't have stability in some sort of very basic way. I don't know if it's because like there's maybe a livelihood concern um, or something about just the day-to-day -day, um, livelihood like more above the level of job, right? Where it's like your house, your home, some sort of like major aspect of stability. It seems like you should be seeking it out, but because right now it's blocked. So I think the advice in this card is to work on the areas in, in your just day-to-day -day existence that bring you stability. So you had said that, you know, you don't know what's going on, you feel like you're in a funky spot. Well, it sounds like, you know, you're concerned about connecting with your spirit guides. I think what, you know, these cards are trying to tell you is that if you can just work, it sounds like it's a cart versus what is it putting the cart before the horse you you brought up your concerns about communicating with your spirit guides but it sounds like if you can become more grounded in your day-to-day -day existence and build a foundation like we saw here um the coursework that you're doing will eventually bear fruit it's going to take a while right as we saw here but it seems like it seems like it's not, I don't think it's about communicating with the spirit guides. I feel like it's working on the, the self-care, um, the fundamental things in your life in order to bring about um, some stability. And once you have that, then the communication with your spirit guides and your angels will flow. I think that's all, about all I have to say. Um, Good luck with all of your problems and I hope you make swift progress and um, thank you very much.